So this language is going to be super duper simple. Minimal is the word. Polish notation, that's easier. Operators before operands, they are essentially function calls. Arithmetics look like this. Logical operators look like this. Ternary for branching. A max function, that looks like this. Assignment, it looks like this for variables, for functions. Printing, looks like this. Looping, I don't know if it's necessary for a minimal language, but uh, here you are. It's used for demoing functions over sequences. It's easier. We're going to do one character tokens and one character tokens only. Why? Because our tokenizer is super easy. It's just take the next character. Literals can only be 0 through 9 then. If you want bigger, compose it with multiply and addition. If you want negative numbers, use subtract. If you want floating point numbers, then use divide. It's going to do uh, one global heap, no stack frames, no nothing. This is simple. Since variables and functions are stored by definitions, then side effects will cascade. If you change an upstream definition, then the downstream definition, when it's evaluated, will have a different result. I think it's cool. It might be shit. I don't know, but it's simple. We're going to do string replacement for function arguments. You might have noticed they are not a single character. But we replace them with the actual literals. So I guess we're good. I think that's it. So let's get to uh, implementing the language. We'll start with loading the source file, defining a main function, you know, load source file, define the global heap, we call it context, and then just iterate over the source li line by line and evaluate them. We define one helper function called head. We just pop the first character of the string, that's the next token, and then uh, return that along with the remainder string. Uh, we define a helper function get args. It first asserts that we're actually in parentheses and then it uh, gets the head and defines a counter for parentheses because we want to split by the outermost scope. We iterate through the text. If we see a comma, we append the current value to the argument list. If we see a parentheses start, we increase the counter. If we see a parentheses end, we decrease the counter. And at the end, we, uh, we append the head to the current argument value. And then after the loop, we append the final uh, value to the arguments. And then we define an evaluate function. And this is like the the final piece of the puzzle, and it's also going to be the big one. We'll uh, have some input text, which is what's going to be evaluated. We'll have the context, which is the global heap. We'll have some depth because we are essentially defining this as uh, a recursive function, and we want to make damn sure that we don't get into a too deep recursion depth. If the head is in zero through nine, we know it's literal. We assert the remainder text to be nothing and we return it as an int. And then we split the arguments. And if the remainder text is zero, we just set the arguments to an empty list. This is the case for variables uh, and subsequently also empty function calls because in this implementation, variables and functions are essentially the same. Then we do a match case, which I recently found out is part of, uh, part of Python. I didn't know, but uh, that's cool. We match based on head and arguments, so we can assert an operator has the correct amount of arguments. We define assignments. They add a raw expressions to a key in the heap. Then we define print. It evaluates an expression, prints the results, and also returns it. That means you can use it in place and use it as a debugger. Then we define all the arithmetics, all of them binary functions a and b, evaluate a and b, return the operated results. Then we have the logical operators, totally the same as the arithmetic ones, a and b, evaluate, return. Then we have a branching operator, evaluate a boolean expression, and depending on which branch we take, we evaluate the result and return. For the looping operator, we evaluate the start and end of the range, then we loop through, substitute i into the expression to be evaluated, a function, I guess, and then return. This is only implemented to make demoing easier so we can print a sequence applied to a function. The final case is a wildcard that captures both variables and arguments, retrieves uh, the defining expression from the context, from the heap, iterates over if there are any arguments, and replace the placeholders, then evaluate and return. And then to top it off, a completely redundant piece of code at the end, raise a value error if we ever get to this point. That's because we essentially should catch everything with our wildcard at the end. It was useful for development. It's not going to do anything now. Yeah. And then just run main. This is the factorial function in this language. It's so ugly. It's the most scuffed factorial function I've 
ever seen, but it works. And this is the Fibonacci function. Also scuffed. Also works. Alright, thank you for watching. I'll see you in a couple of months, I guess.